All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So today we're going to be talking about the Prados, the last of the current Incarnan weapons, although based on, you know, the concepts we saw in earlier streams, we're probably going to get more. With that, the Prados, I would say, are definitely the worst of the bunch, but you are going to have to get these in order to use the final evolutions of the other two and the final evolutions of the other two are really worth it even if you have to build this in order to get there those two weapons seem super solid so a few things we're going to talk about in this video uh number one is the uh way that i want to go about talking about the evolutions and hopefully that will catch on uh and also we're going to talk about the multiple builds that are available to the prados that are decent so first and foremost uh the build that we're going to be showing in today's video uh is going to be and this is how we're going to talk about this a zero because you have no choice a three a two a two and then a one so just in order of how you have to evolve the weapon just what number the choice is is what this is and then the build is for that evolutionary line i think this is going to be a very easy way to just assess what the hell you're looking at uh and it's going to be in the um builds section uh so for your reference whenever we look at the actual builds for this weapon those numbers correlate to that exactly now for that we are going to be doing the more unique of the builds i would say and that is the slide attack build for this weapon uh for those of you that wish for the days of old with the atarax this is probably going to be right up your alley because our first evolution is a plus 20 percent to sprint speed and plus 20 percent to slide i will say the plus two slide is very nice you can of course mod your warframe for this or use neja and you won't see me using neja in this video because he has an automatic advantage with this particular build because the better your slides are the better this build will be because you're going to be able to move very very fast if you have really high slide and neja has that inherently but that does mean that if you use this weapon with neja uh, he becomes a blender that can speed through missions. So take that into account. Your other option here, if you either don't want more slide, uh, is, or, or if you're just, you know, if you already are modding for slide and want something else is going to be whirling fury. This is just plus 20% attack speed. Kind of can't go wrong with that. And then slam radius is totally useless. So it's pretty much a choice between two and three here. After that, we have our evolution three we are going with plus one and a half meters of slide attack range i know for a slide attack build it's very surprising that we would pick this one this is pretty much the only build that's going to use this evolution as the other two are for each enemy hit by a slam radius gain four combo count which you're not going to use and then everyone else is going to use plus 15 initial combo this is of course for the heavy attack line for this weapon because higher initial combo means higher multiplier that you have at base which means higher heavy attack spam and then for our fourth slot, uh, I've actually just gone with plus 30% parkour velocity. The choice on here doesn't really make much difference for the slide attack build because you get the option of more double jump strength, faster parkour velocity, or alternatively, reach 3x combo and heavy attack to activate the incarnate form. And you really are going to build way more combo than this super, super fast with the slide attack build. So this really doesn't do anything. So I'd rather just have better bullet jumps. Uh, I will say one of the nice things about the Prados is that you can use it as a stat stick um in terms of just getting parkour velocity from this and then better slide and sprint speed and you can use it in this form as a decent weapon that also has those benefits which i see as a positive uh, and then for evolution five we are using on slide kill plus 50 percent heavy attack efficiency because this weapon with the advent of the new focus system not having a heavy attack efficiency node in it is pretty much the best way to play a hybrid build now uh there are other weapons that are going to hit harder with the heavy attack but this weapon kind of gets two things when you build hybrid uh, and that is to say that it has good slide attacks for building a ton of combo and then getting into those heavies through transfigured momentum gives you that 90 percent heavy attack efficiency with only having to build the uh one different mod than you usually would that also already has elements of damage on it so we are using this one the others are plus 100 100 heavy attack wind up speed and for the other build that is just raw heavy attacks of course you're going to choose this and you're going to get a little bit more crit damage and stuff of that like because of that uh and then universal readiness which is collecting ammo grants five melee combo counter now this can also be seen as a like stat stick thing so like whenever you get like you know pick up ammo off the ground you're getting that combo counter and then theoretically you could have these equipped and use them with like Korra or atlas or whatnot but 
the problem that I've seen is that unless you're using like a primer um, that you're going to you know, be spending that ammo, you kind of are never going to need to pick up ammo with those Warframes. Like Korra is going to be using the whip. Like you're not going to shoot your gun that much. So this is not really going to actually do much for you in those builds, I would say. If we get a mod like the, um, I believe it's the Modus or, or some such on the uh, cats and dogs that is for ammo that allows us to pick up as much ammo as possible. Like we can pick up as many health orbs as we want right now. Then suddenly that will make universal readiness way, way better because those frames that want to use this as a stat stick and pretty much just keep their stuff going just by killing enemies regularly and picking up ammo from those enemies that die, uh, which would not be hard at all. So this kind of opens it up to maybe a future thing it can do. But as for right now, I don't think those frames really benefit much from this uh, as they're not spending that much ammo anyway outside of maybe at a very high level, but eh, then it's just kind of neither here nor there, I would say. So yeah, for this, this is going to be the slide build. Now, That's talking about the builds before we head out, because we are not going to do a simulacrum. I don't think it's necessary. We're just going to go straight to the steel path for the Prados, the two builds. And as you can see, the numbers here, we have the heavy build, which is a zero, two, three, one, two in terms of the evolutionary line. And then it just utilizes this. This is only a two form of build. Obviously, the mods in it are quite expensive, but you could just use the lower level of those. Um, and this will hit reasonably hard. A thing that I will note is that this is not even close to as good as just doing this exact same thing with the Reaper Prime. Uh, and that is for a number of reasons, mainly being that while both heavy attacks just automatically proc slash, uh, you have a much, much lower multiplier on your heavy attack. And even though it hits twice, that doesn't really help that guaranteed slash proc, which is the main thing that you're looking for. Uh, also, just in terms of raw stats, if you're looking at this versus the Reaper, um, we're doing much worse. We have worse range, although the Incarnate form will more than make up for that. So usually you're going to be at much higher range because any heavy attack will send you into the Incarnate form. So that's kind of not really a thing. Uh, and then in terms of your base damage here, they are the same, but... The Reaper Prime has access to 15% more base critical chance, which matters a ton, and an entire like 0.5 higher crit multiplier, which also turns out matters a ton and higher status, though that's not a big factor. So yeah, and also, you know, another 400 heavy attack damage that does not divide into two hits. So you're just getting one enormous slash proc, which is almost always better than multiple slash procs. Um... But yeah, so if you're going to plan on using just like a raw heavies build, I really would suggest the Reaper Prime over this or like, you know, honestly, a few other sides, whether that's hate or whatnot. Hate and Reaper Prime are very similar. Um, so yeah, if you're going to be doing raw heavy attacks, this weapon works, but it's not going to be amazing for it, which is why we're showing off the slide hybrid build. So for slide hybrid, it only has one real requirement, and that is focus energy. This gives you plus 40% heavy attack efficiency. Whenever you add that with the 50% from our final node, you get 90%, which is the cap anyway which means we're only going to use 10% of our combo anytime we heavy attack. That allows us to spin to win a bunch. And then whenever we have that bonus going, which has a good timer on it, we can just heavy attack at 12 X combo for large amounts of damage and large slash procs to get rid of enemies. This is going to do big burst damage and can take down things like acolytes and also will cut right through armor because those slash procs are not going to care much. Uh, the only other thing to note is that you do really, really want amalgam organ, uh, amalgam organ shatter because the heavy attack windup speed really helps a lot. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much what's up here. The only other thing of note is that we are using two Gladiator mods here. I've decided to use Gladiator Vice uh, over Quickening because we don't need any help with our combo count. And also I feel like the attack speed is already plenty. Um, but you know, you could go with Quickening if you want to, or if you just don't have Gladiator Vice, that's fine. You could honestly just use a very basic speed mod, like just Fury is gonna be more than fine. Because, you know, Gladiator Vice is only a slight upgrade over Fury anyway. Uh, but between Blood Rush and Gladiator uh, bonus combo with the Gladiator Might and all that good business, uh, we are going to be getting 70% uh, critical chance with the combo multiplier. And that does mean that I do have one of the Gladiator mods on Naros, but, you know, it's going to be minorly better. And this is just going to be, you know, completely invincible Naros walking around, basically. So, yeah, uh, let's do the Steel Path run and i'll see you there all right time to jump into the steel path this should not be hard 
uh, or a problem really in any way. Uh, I will note that like between cuts here, I did like throw Guardian on as an arcane onto uh, Anaros and um, bumped his health up a little bit with the Umbral mods too. Not that that's going to matter too much, but I just wanted the most hilarious health number available. As you are wont to do. Okay, so base gist, sprint and slide. Once we build up our combo, which is not going to take very long at all with our very high uh, range and everything. And also, of course, this can still kill enemies as we have an okay status. And this is also going to be stripping armor because we have to build for corrosive. Uh, and then want to get our incarnate form out, which is going to increase our range. And I believe it increases base damage a little bit. I know it increases attack speed as well, as you can pretty clearly see, I think, from what I was doing before. But yeah, if you want to uh, slide attack, this is the deal. I will note, and this might happen during this steel path run. And if it does, I'm going to leave it in. Uh, I did some testing with this before, and uh, what happened was that doing this actually caused my uh, screen to bug out and go blank. Uh, and I don't know why, but I've switched Warframe since then because I was originally doing this with Gara, and I haven't had it happen as a Naros yet. But with Gara, if you use this build, it seems to just not work because it will like bug your whole game, which will probably get fixed. But that is a thing to note if you are a Gara main that wants to uh, wants to slide around. That's uh, that's a thing to watch out for. But you can see that this is like you know it's not like the best build in the world or anything like that. But it is totally totally okay. Like it doesn't need to be like the craziest thing ever. Uh, it's just that it's like a neat build you can do, and like the guaranteed slash procs really are carrying this thing completely. Um, but the heavy attacks on this weapon type are just like not particularly great. Also worth noting, um, just building this thing regularly for combo, like if you're just, you know, basically going to build it like a Cronin, uh, building it like a Cronin is basically just building it like a worse Cronin. Like that's what you're going to end up with is just a worse version of the Cronin. And if you want that, then like by all means, it will be a worse higher range version. So if you're taking it to regular missions, it'll theoretically be better. Uh, just because the higher range and enough damage to kill means better at lower levels. Um, but in general, like in terms of steel path and stuff, you're not gonna you're not gonna choose this over the Cronin unless you're doing it for like one of the weirder builds or for like heavy attacks only with range uh, or for like you know a stat stick, which is I think the main use of this is gonna be like you know the higher sprint, higher parkour, uh, and holding whatever mods you need. Like say for example. As some of you probably saw, there is a third build for this, which is the Valkyr stat stick. On Valkyr, the stat, this is the superior stat stick. Like, the only things that you can put on your stat stick for Valkyr that are going to matter are uh, the Gladiator mods. And because of that, this thing can use the Gladiator mods really well in, like, a decent build and also give Valkyr better slide and better sprint and a lot of other stuff that just helps her. Parkour speed, of course. Uh, and that's nice. I think these are maybe optimal for Valkyr, but of course we're going to talk about that more whenever we talk about Valkyr. Yeah, you can see that this is uh, just entirely uh, okay. It is an okay build. I really wish that the stats on these weapons were higher, or like the Incarnate form like gave them way more. Like it just if they're <laughs> if their base like stuff just like looked really disappointing, and then the Incarnate form like really insanely bumped the stats, that would be. Um, certainly a lot better feeling but obviously it's trivially easy whenever you're built for it to keep the incarnate form up because all you need is a 5x multiplier and then you heavy attack and it just transforms into the incarnate for a good long time but yeah you just need to make sure you're heavy attacking every once in a while which is not a big deal yeah it's unfortunate to not see like the crit stats or anything become crazy or at least not feel crazy uh, as it's not like we're in red crits only territory, which you can do with other weapons, especially with heavy attack only. But you can see, like, these are some, like, chunky enough slash procs. Like, they, they will kill these, like, enemies. Left. But it's just, it's not that insane. At lower levels with Neja, uh, it is, like, a super blender that speeds through missions, and this will, like, instantly kill all enemies in, like, a good area. Uh, but in in this lower level content it's or this higher level content it's considerably worse 
I'll grab this before the accolade shows up. Building some combo. Hit the accolade very hard. Whenever you, whenever you have built-up combo, like the acolytes really don't like it. Um, I would say that they're a bit more vulnerable to that one-hit super high damage than uh, any of these super heavy armored enemies. So taking care of them is not bad. And the uh, heavy attack only build works similarly, which you will often, I think, run if you're even just running this with the um, the want to do like the slash proc heavies, but. Again, if you're doing that, there are better weapons, unless you're also looking into getting the parkour speed and stuff for this. For the purposes of running through missions faster. But yeah, overall, I mean, it's easily the worst evolved, like, Incarnate weapon. Uh, the other two blow this out of the water and are weirdly available earlier. So, I mean, it'd be nice if this weapon was, like, bumped up a bit, especially because it's available so much later than the others. The first two weapons are available super early, and you can't get this until rank four, um, which is a bit odd, just considering its state. Maybe DE thought that this was just going to be, uh, like, the Cronin Prime killer, but I certainly don't think so. And also, that's, you know, coupled with the Cronin Prime not being in its prime either. It's definitely a very good melee weapon, but it's certainly not... Uh, in like that really high echelon of weapons overall now as things have moved more towards primary and secondary weapons i would say the thing to keep in mind with this weapon though is whenever you heavy attack enemies even if they don't die uh the slash proc will kill them like the thing that you you have to trust in is that the slash proc will get it done so like you just you just have to make it just like it's gonna tick seven times and like that was an xmas with like a lot of damage reduction and all that good business so you could you can pretty much trust that like if you hit them with it they're gonna they're gonna die from the slash bomb. and it's not gonna be it's not gonna be contested in the vast majority of cases obviously the big one is enemies that are immune to slash but because you're doing usually just two like good sized slash procs because of the way the heavy attack works even enemies that are limited on the amount of slash procs they can take like the acolytes and stuff uh they're not gonna be nearly as you know as tanky as they are to weapons that like dump heat procs on them or something like that because of course you are just doing the couple big ones and their limit of four doesn't really care much about that although i do believe the way that it works on the acolytes is that if you slash proc them with something else uh, and then try and apply the slash from this weapon uh it will not apply over with the stronger ones so that's something to consider uh, that you're not proccing slash on them with like a machine gun with like those small slash procs and that you instead use this first and also don't like spin attack on them too too much as well because i believe they do not uh upgrade the slash procs the until they are the initial ones that have to like run their course which you know takes like multiple seconds and it's gonna end up slower yeah these weapons are just totally fine totally okay obviously if you, if you combine them with like armor stripping and stuff like it looks considerably better but just on their own it's it's not like they're uh setting the world on fire here they're not doing anything too too crazy it's pretty pretty normal stuff here although i guess it's I guess it's pretty decidedly not normal stuff it's like fairly average damage output like the way that we're doing this like slide attacks are not really built for anymore uh, it's also worth noting with the way maiming strike was changed no maiming strike is not really going to be a thing for this weapon i don't think uh whenever i was testing it just using the gladiator crit mod was pretty much always better so wouldn't bother blowing the dust off maiming strike because i don't think it's time for that mod again maybe someday Yeah, we'll melt this acolyte and then uh, we'll head on out of here. It, it, it's malice, which is not a big deal because we're using a melee weapon for once. Yeah, you, can see, you can see those two slash procs. Like, those are. That's pretty chunky for malice. Like, he'll die from just. Uh, oh, no, we were one tick away. Oh, well. Dies from a second hit. Most of the time, you're not going to just stand around looking at the enemy to see if they die from one slash hit. So, not a big deal. 
Oh, I'm going to grab some life support on the way out. As, of course, the, the kill rate on this by itself is not phenomenal. I would actually say it's maybe a little bit better with the heavy only strategy, but like I said, that strategy is a non unique strategy that is just worse than a bunch of other weapons doing it. So, can't really recommend that very easily. Might as well show the unique thing that this does as a uh, as opposed to just a bunch of heavy attacks for 10 minutes right all right anyway that's gonna do it and hopefully hopefully you guys enjoyed this maybe they'll buff this thing who can say the other two weapons are sweet so it could happen